All right, we're going to uh, wrap up with our final part of uh, cooling systems here, guys, and that is uh, antifreeze itself. You can buy antifreeze in one of uh, two ways as far as uh, how it's, it comes, and that's a full concentrate. So on this guy here, it's a full strength must-add water. It should say must-add. Distilled water. Distilled water, which nobody uses, but that's what we're supposed to do, okay? Uh, you can buy this. I just changed it in my truck this weekend. I bought it done, ready to go, 50 to 50 mix, and it's good to go. So what we're looking for is a 50-50 mix of the coolant versus the antifreeze because what we're trying to do is to figure out what the actual boiling point of the antifreeze will be and what its freezing point will be. So we're going to go ahead and focus on this tool right here. And on this is a really cool little Prestone one, five bucks probably. Uh, you have the ones that have floating balls. Have you seen those? Yeah. Uh, you know, if five balls floats, it's this degree of freezing and four balls and so on. I really like this one. It's been my, my favorite one that I've used for testing this. And here I have Celsius and Fahrenheit. And it says that for minus 34 degrees, it's a 50%. That means half water, half coolant. Okay? So... Uh, if we look here, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to test the straight antifreeze and see what the freeze point would be. It's not going to be obviously an ideal situation. I think there's one of these in the cabinet that's already mixed. You want to go look? What I want to do here is squeeze the ball as tight as I can here because I need enough antifreeze in here. Do you see where I'm actually even a little low on this fill line? It yeah. says here liquid level. I'm a hair low. But I'm going to go ahead and look at this here. And what we're going to be able to prove a point on is on the freeze point of straight, uh, straight coolant here. You can see my freeze point, my arrow is like minus 50 degrees. The thing is, we don't need that, do we? No. And the cost of it, I know that um, when I did my truck this weekend, it was uh, three gallons, 3.1 gallons, uh, $12.99 a gallon. Okay, so you got this uh, freeze point here. By diluting this down, our goal is to get to that uh, minus 34 here. It's not a whole lot more. And, and is there possibly this gauge is maxing out? Yep. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but that's what I want to do. Well, what's cool about this tool is I go ahead and just flip this. And like I said, I'd want to get a little more antifreeze in here. And now do you see I have a boiling point? So at, at this straight antifreeze, do you see here when I look at the Fahrenheit and I go up that this has a boiling point of 268 degrees. Okay, what's water boil at? 212. 212. 212. On your lab sheet, I have a question there that says that, or a, a comment on there that says that for every one PSI increase, you gain uh, three PSI, or three, three degrees Fahrenheit, excuse me. Okay. This one? Yep. So somebody's wrote on here that they mixed it. We'd hope that they actually did. A lot of times what you do is you just keep an old jug around and then you fill that half with water and then take half of your jug and uh, or same thing, you could dump, you buy one of these and dump half of this in an empty one. You could fill them both with water and now they're both a 50-50 mix. But don't trust that, always test, um, test what you're doing. So here's what we have. We have that water freezes at 212 degrees Boils. Fahrenheit. Boils, thank you. It's been a long day. Boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. For every one PSI increase, I'm gonna gain three degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so the RC51 we just tested, it was 18 PSI is what that system held at, right? So what's 18 times three? 54. So that means for 18 PSI, that means we get to add 54 degrees before straight water would boil. What's that equal? 6, 6, 266? Yep. With a good cap and a pressurized system, we increase the boiling point to that. That's with straight water. Okay? So do you see where the PSI is important? Yep. If you got cap that's leaking, it's going to reduce that down to those minimal temperatures. What I don't know without looking into it, I don't know if anybody knows, is on, uh, on the boiling point and freezing point of these, let's see if it tells here. I believe that this is with no PSI. Okay? So that means you have a bad cap or a bad system. I'm not 100% confident on that, but I believe... Um, that's what it is. So if I take, if this is good for 268 degrees, <clears throat> and I 
apply 18 PSI, that means 54 degrees. Do you see that I would move my, my coolant into a protection zone of 300 and some degrees? Yep. Would I really want to run my engine that hot? No. Uh -huh. No, you'd start warping stuff, right? Start warping heads and, and having other kinds of problems. But uh, so guys, this is just a couple of different ways that we want to look at this. When it comes to antifreeze, I'm telling you, you know, we use the silicate free. You guys have probably seen these. The ones we grabbed here were the green. Have you guys seen these where they're orange and, and different colors and they're um, eco. Eco. eco? Thank you, thank you. It has been a long day. Save the whales. Uh, and, and then you'll really see the ones, there's a lot of people out there that are dog conscious or animal conscious and they literally have it where they'll show a picture of a dog on it and say that it could drip right on the ground, not kill your pets. So. That is something that might be important to you guys and you want to know the different options that are out there.